that ministry. All right, we're going to share in our scripture for the day. It's from Psalm 148. And so we're going to invite you to stand, and Barry's going to come forward to share that reading. Today's reading is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, sun and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. All you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle. Small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations. You princes and all rulers on earth. Young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, a praise for all of his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Here ends the reading. Each of us likes to be praised. There was a, a boy who was begging his father to play darts with him. Now, the father knew that the boy really could very rarely hit the target. He was afraid he was going to break something or, or hurt himself. But the boy kept badgering him and, and said, Look, Dad, it's very easy. I throw the dart and all you do is say, Great shot. Well, of course, there is someone who deserves our praise, our utmost, our highest praise, but some of us might be withholding that praise. There's a story of a church in an old town. It was a, a sophisticated, dignified, quiet little church. Well, one morning a visitor came and he sat, and when the preacher began to preach, he said something on the order of, God is great, and the man yelled, Amen, praise the Lord. Well, everybody turned around and stared at him. Even the pastor stopped and couldn't get over the fact somebody said something while he was preaching. Well, a little bit later, the pastor said something else, something like, God provides for us, and the man yelled, Amen, praise the Lord. And everybody turned again, stared at him, this time for several moments. Well, this happened about three more times until the usher walked up to him, tapped him on his shoulder and said, Sir, stop that praise the Lord stuff. We don't do that in this church. <laughs> well, we do that in this church. We praise the Lord. Now, we may not be shouting amen, praise the Lord, very often, but we praise. We praise the Lord. And one of the, one of the ways that we do it is with music, and as Pastor Paul has recognized our music and arts uh, ministry here and those who give so much, we, we're really blessed with all of that leadership and talent that we have. Well, what does it really mean, though, to, to give praise? My dictionary says to praise is to express heartily a high opinion or admiration for something or someone. Well, one of the ways we do it is with music. We do it, of course, in our worship services. Like, like most churches today, we have uh, two different kinds of, of worship services. Three services, two different kinds. I did hear about one church, though, that had four different services every Sunday morning. There was one for those new to the faith. There was another for those who like traditional worship. There was one for those who had lost their faith and would like to get it back. And there was yet another for those who had a bad experience with church and were complaining about it. Now each one of these services had a name. 
They were the finders, keepers, losers, and weepers. <laughs> well, we only have two styles of worship among our three services, contemporary and, and traditional. But both styles praise the Lord. As I said, music is one way. But we praise the Lord in our services in other ways, too. We praise in the celebrating of the sacraments. We praise in our prayers, especially our prayers of thanksgiving, but also our prayers of intercession because we're recognizing God's power. And, and of course, we praise in the, the reading, the meditating on Scripture, the, pre the preaching and teaching of Scripture. Now, our praise does not, should not stop here in the sanctuary. We're to praise God wherever we are. We're to praise God in thought, word, and in our actions. Several years ago, we did a church-wide study of Rick Warren's 40 Days of Purpose. We used his book, The Purpose Driven Life. And in, in that study, we learned that worship is our first purpose in life. God created us to bring glory to him. Now, he could have created us to be mindless robots. He could have programmed us that we did exactly what he wanted, when he wanted it. He could have even programmed us to, to love him and to praise him. But God is love. He created us because he wanted to love us. And he desires our love back. But he wants that love to be voluntary. So he's given us the will, the will to, to worship him, to love him, to praise him or, or not. Well, there's many good, appropriate, even beneficial reasons why we should praise the Lord. And, and this morning I'm going to go through four of them based on... Psalm 148, which Barry just read for us. The first of these reasons is that God is worthy. He deserves our praise. Let me go back and touch on the first part of Psalm 148. It begins with the words, praise the Lord. Then it makes clear that everything in the heavens is to praise the Lord. It says, Praise the Lord in the heights above, all his angels, heavenly hosts, the sun and the moon, shining stars, waters above the skies. Praise the name of the Lord. What? Why? Well, it says right, right in the fifth verse. For at his command they were created. God has created all of those things. And then it goes on, the second part of the psalm goes on to, to, to direct every one of us, every created person, but also every created thing on earth to praise the Lord. It says, praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow, clouds, winds, mountains, trees, animals, small creatures, flying birds, kings of the earth, all nations, you princes, all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. You know, we believe King David wrote this about 3,000 years ago. He wrote this psalm and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So this is, this, is, this is God actually telling us to praise Him. You say, now wait, wait a minute. How can, how can inanimate objects like the, the stars and the moon and how can things like the wind, how can little insects, how can birds... How can they praise the Lord? Well, I want you to look at it this way, by me. Many years ago, people used ice houses to, to store food. And during the winter months, when the lakes and ponds were frozen, people would go and they would cut large chunks of ice out of these lakes and ponds and take them back and put them in these ice houses to preserve the food. Now, these ice houses were rather large, but they had huge walls, no windows, very tight fitting, maybe just one big door. And when the ice was put in there, mounds of sawdust was put over. 
to insulate. And quite often the ice would last quite a while into the summer. Well, one day one of the workmen had a very expensive watch on his arm and he dropped it, didn't notice it. When he did, he started looking for it and couldn't find it. The men he was working with, they all helped him. And they're, they're down on their hands and knees and they got rakes going through the sawdust and nobody could find the watch. So after a while, it was lunchtime, and they, they went outside to eat their lunch. Meanwhile, a boy, a little boy who knew what was going on, knew that the watch had been lost, goes in into the ice house, and only about five minutes later, he comes out with the watch. He gives it to the man who lost it, and he, he and the rest of the guys are stunned. He said, how in the world did you find it so quick? The boy said it was easy. Said, I went in, I closed the door, I lay down on the sawdust, and I kept quiet, and I heard the ticking. When was the last time you took a walk? You took a walk where there was no noise of traffic. Uh, a time with that iPod blaring in your ears, or somebody talking to you, and you actually heard the birds sing. Maybe you heard the locusts make their noise. Maybe you even heard the wind blowing through the trees. When was the last time you were at home and it was quiet enough that when the rain started, you heard the drops against the window pane? Have you ever stopped? Maybe you even pulled the car to the side of the road when you saw a beautiful sunrise or sunset and you saw what looked like God had painted a beautiful painting in the sky. You see, my friends, all created things praise the Lord by doing what they were created to do. And in the process, they praise Him. They witness to the fact that there is a Creator, and He deserves praise. You and I are also created by God. We owe our very existence, our lives, everything we possess. We owe them to God. And he deserves our praise. He's worthy of it. Well, that brings me to the second reason to praise God. We praise God so that we don't worship the wrong things. You know, most of, a lot of those things uh, that were mentioned uh, in the psalm, at one time or other, people worshipped as gods. Right? I mean, people used to worship the sun, they would worship the moon and stars, even worship mountains. And of course we know they worshiped the pharaohs in Egypt, they were considered gods, and the, uh, the emperors of Rome were considered gods at one time, and people worshipped them. Of course we snicker and say, well that's foolish, yeah, why would you do that? Well, people today worship things too, don't they? Hmm? They worship things like the almighty dollar, worship their jobs, maybe the career, worship that new car they got or the new car they want. Perhaps they worship some other possession or they worship some relationship, a personal relationship or maybe, maybe it's a celebrity they worship. Now, if you don't believe me, look around. It's a lot of empty seats, and not because they were all here in the other two services. There's a lot of reason. A lot of people are going to be in church this weekend. Now, we can't judge why they're not here. They may have a, a, a reason that is understandable. We don't know all those facts, but we do know this. We know that every possession, every activity... Everything we have and every relationship we cherish was given to us by Almighty God. And it is temporary. The psalm declares, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Being above the earth and the heavens means he's eternal. And only God is eternal. Only God is God. And God above all deserves our worship. And when we praise Him, we're less tempted to worship things that will let us down. Things that will rust and break, and things that will leave us. 
Reason number three, praising the Lord with our gratitude builds our faith in Him. You know, everything in this world was created by God. Everything we have came from God, so we certainly owe Him our thanks. But I think, and I know I'm guilty of it too often, I, I, I give a blanket thank you, a quick thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, and then I go on ranting about what I want Him to do. Now it's okay, He tells us to ask, to pray. But there's a real blessing in, in praising God for what he's already done for us. Because the more we thank him and the more specific we are in thanking him, the more our faith is grown. We should be thanking God for our health. You say, I don't feel that good this morning. Well, I'll tell you, you got here, didn't you? Huh? You're on this side of the grass this morning? You're breathing. It's a reason to give thanks. Thank you for the job you had. You say, I don't have a job. Well, thank you for the job you used to have, and thank you for the job he's going to get you. Thank you for the food that will be on your table tonight. Thank you for the roof that will be over your head. As we thank God for specific prayers that have been answered, our faith in prayer is reinforced. Whether they were answered with a yes or even a no, we're, we're, we got a substitute. Now we look back and say, hey, God, God knew what he was doing. Maybe it's taken a while to get that answer. But the more specific we are in thanking God, the more we praise him, and the more we share our gratitude, the more we tell others of what he's done in our lives. It helps them also to grow in their faith. Bill Heibel tells a, an interesting story. He's a preacher, very large church out in the West, huge, mega church. He was telling about a service that he conducted. It was a beautiful worship service. He said that uh, several adults were baptized in his service. And as he was going back towards the, to leave, to go back to his office, there was a woman sitting in the pew and she was crying. So he sat down next to her and said, what's the matter? She said, well, I'm a little ashamed. And he said, why? She said, well, almost 20 years ago, I began praying for my mother that she would come to Jesus Christ. And I prayed for about the first five years. I prayed every day, every day prayed. Nothing's happened. And I kept praying after that. But I have to admit, I prayed. But many times, I didn't. It was with very little faith. I got to the point where I thought, maybe I'm just going through the motions here. Maybe God's just never going to answer me. She said, but I kept praying, and I kept praying, and I kept praying. After 19 years, I was still praying, and tonight, she was baptized. She said, I'll never doubt the power of prayer again. Well, I said, there's four reasons that I would give you. Four reasons to praise the Lord. The fourth one is we praise the Lord to keep us hopeful in tough times. Because, my friends, you probably, most of you already know it. You're going to have you're going to have a big problem at times. A crisis is going to come into your life. It could be a problem with your work. It could be a problem at school. It could be a problem with your finances, with your help, the help of somebody you love. And you're going to pray. It's going to appear sometimes that God doesn't hear you. That he's not listening, maybe. Or that he's not going to answer your prayer. Well, that's when we need to praise God more than ever. We need to praise him for what he's already done in our lives. We also need to, to hold on to the promises that he's given us. You know, when we pray a promise back to God, that's praise because we're saying, God, you gave us this problem, I mean, this problem and this promise. And I trust you. I believe in you. There's so many wonderful promises in the Bible. There's a few of them up on the screen. In Hebrews, the 13th chapter, it says, God, God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. In Matthew, the 7th chapter, Jesus says, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
A little later, Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In Romans 8, chapter, St. Paul says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So many promises. So many great promises. But the greatest promise God ever gave us, and only he could keep, was when he gave us his son. You know, the end of this psalm, Psalm 148, says this. And he, meaning God, has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. The word horn in the Old Testament, when it's used, means power. It means strength. And David is thanking God for the the power that the people of Israel have been given from God. But he was also stating a promise, a prophecy, that God would send a Savior. In Luke, the first chapter, it says, God has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. My friends, if God never does another thing for you or for me, he still and he always will throughout our lifetime and all eternity deserve our praise because he's given us his very son. His son, Jesus Christ, came into this world and took upon himself your sin and my sin. He died, he suffered in our place so we could have forgiveness and eternal life. His life, death, and resurrection has defeated sin, death, grave, and the devil for, for you and for me, for all who trust in him. There's no greater reason to praise him. There's no greater reason for hope. Hope, no matter what the problem is. Now, some of you, some of you realize that uh, last week my brother Bob died. Oh, brother Bob. He died... Uh, I did his, uh, his funeral service this past Monday. I guess things really started going downhill last November. He had a lot of problems neurologically, and he wound up in the hospital, paralyzed, almost totally paralyzed. He could only move one hand a little bit. He couldn't eat anything, couldn't even drink water. There was an operation on his throat that went bad. He had, had to be fed by a tube. He was in such excruciating pain that the only way the pain could be controlled was to giving massive doses of medicine, which made him either unconscious and at times delirious. And we prayed. Ah, oh, we prayed. His wife, his daughter, family. We prayed. We prayed for healing. Somebody might say, well, I guess God didn't answer. Oh, yes, he did. He gave him the ultimate healing. He took him to be with himself. He took him to heaven, where there is no, there's no pain. There's no suffering. There's no sorrow. There's no death. There's only life in his presence. Now, I want to thank everyone here that has expressed their sympathy to me and my family for the many cards, the, the telephone calls, especially the hugs, because it hurts. It hurts to be separated from someone that you love, somebody that I've known all my life, looked up to. It hurts. But you know what, my friends? It's a separation, it's not a termination. Because we have God's promise. And because Jesus Christ lives, we too will live. And I know that Bob lives now. And I know that someday there's going to be a grand reunion between me, my brother Bob, other family members that have gone before. There's going to be a grand reunion, my friends, between you and those in your your acquaintance, your families that have preceded you, those who will follow us. There's going to be a grand reunion. Until that day, until that day and then throughout all eternity, there is not one thing 
There is no problem. There's no disease. There's no demon. Even death itself will not separate us from the love in Jesus Christ. I think that calls for an amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please stand. Father, we do praise you. Sometimes we, we think that we accomplish things and we know that we do nothing without, your, without, without you. You've given us our time. You've given us our, our abilities. You've given us the very life, the very breath that we breathe. We pray, Lord, that we will never stop thanking you. We will never stop praising you. And we look forward to that day when we'll be with you in glory. So in Jesus' name we 